Welcome to Daily Tanya. Today is Friday, the third day of Menachem Av. And today we begin the fourth part of the Tanya, the part that's called the Geras HaKodesh. This is the holy letters of the Alter Rebbe. And uh, as we explained in the past, the Tanya has five parts to it. The first three parts that we just finished yesterday, those are the Alter Rebbe himself put it in, and he as he published the book of Tanya. And after his passing, his children added to the book of Tanya these uh, two parts. One is the letters of the Alter Rebbe, the writings the Alter Rebbe wrote uh, throughout the years. Not all of them, but a collection of them. And what is... Um, Unique about this, first of all, those are letters talk about the different topics. They're not chronologically or, uh, organized, but each one, each letter, or each essay has talks about a different subject. A lot of things is things that we already learned in the Tanya and Alter Rebbe here adds and clarifies a lot of things that are other subjects. So. What is good about it also is that every chapter in this part of the Tanya is not necessarily related to the other chapters. So if you missed one chapter, you can just move on with the next chapter. So let's begin. We'll begin with Tzedakah. Again, we're improvising today. We'll later put it into the Tzedakah box. So this letter... The first letter the Alter Rebbe wrote to his followers in the early days of his leadership. And the Alter Rebbe, as we know, he discovered the Hasidus on his own when he came to the Mezritcha Magid, Rabbi Dov Ber, his teacher, which, who was the successor of the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of Hasidus. And when he came to the, to the Mezrit Shemagid, he, the, the Magid, Rabbi Dov Ber, told the Alter Rebbe that he has a secret that he's keeping for many years. The Baal Shem Tov instructed him that when you come to me, when the Alter Rebbe comes to the Magid, then he should reveal to him the secret of his neshama, what his soul came to this world for, and that his neshama, the neshama of the Alter Rebbe, that is, has a very special mission in this world. And the mission is not going to be easy. It's going to take sacrifice, physical and spiritual sacrifice. And indeed, the Alter Rebbe sacrificed a lot, risked his life in order to spread and to teach the teachings of the Hasidus, the Chabad teachings. Today, Baruch Hashem, we are so fortunate that the, these teachings became something that in every Jewish circle they accept, they know, they study the Tanya, even in places where I remember 20, 30, 40 years ago, they didn't, they didn't study those things. Today, Baruch Hashem, it's everywhere. And it becomes more and more. So let's begin this part of the this letter of the fourth part of the Tanya. So here the Al Rebbe will begin by addressing the communities of his followers that are scattered in different places. And, and he speaks about that he he was very happy to hear that they followed his instructions in studying the entire Talmud together, meaning he divide, they divided, the instructed that every community they should divide among the people the study of the Talmud. Everyone should study a little piece, uh, one part of the Talmud, and together it is considered like all of them finished the entire Talmud. There's such a concept that when people join together, and everyone studies a little bit of the part of the Torah, being that they do it 
as a as a group, then each one of them is considered like they studied the entire study. So let's begin inside. Says the Alter Rebbe. We begin with a benediction to bless and to give thanks to God for he is good. My soul has heard and been revived by good tidings. And good signifies Torah. As our stage, as our sages state in the tractate of it, and as it says in the Psalms, it says Teira Hashem Tamima. More specifically, it signifies God's Teira, which is a perfect whole. Where it is the Teira in this state that the same verse describes as reviving the soul, Meshivas Nafesh. And what is the good news? Is the completion of the entire Talmud in most communities of the Alter Rebbe's followers. The above remarks refers to the completion of the whole Talmud in its entirety. Sounds redundant, doesn't it? The whole Talmud in its entirety. Rebbe explains because in the Talmud, the Talmud is commentary uh, expands on the Mishnah, the Mishnahic sages. And however, the, not every tractate of Mishnah has commentary of Talmud. For example, in the first part of the Mishnah, you have the, the section called the Zeroim, talks about the agricultural laws. And there's only a Talmud in the first Mishnayas, which is brachas, the blessings. The other Mishnayas, like Peya, Damai, those do not have the Talmud. So when you study the entire Talmud, like for example, we know Baruch Hashem today, we have the Dafayomi, the daily page, the daily uh, daf that they study, and they finish the Talmud in uh, seven years. So in that case, though, that doesn't cover the entire Talmud in its entirety because it doesn't cover the Mishnayas, the Mishnah that don't have Talmud. So here the Alter Rebbe talks about completion, the whole Talmud in its entirety, meaning including those tractates that don't have Talmud on it, but only the Mishnah. Anyway, in most towns and congregation of Anash, the men of our Hasidic Brotherhood, and the Alter Rebbe says, So much for gratitude in respect of past accomplishment, and now a request for the future, that they should strengthen themselves in these studying together the, the oral Torah. May God thus continue from year to year to grant added strength to your hearts among the mighty with the might of the Torah. And make known to mankind the might of oral Torah and its power, which is great. So we know the written Torah is referred to as the Chachma or the Chesed. And the oral Torah is more like the Bina and the Gevura, which is Chachma, Chesed represents the essence of everything, just like the flash of wisdom that begins the awareness of something is Chachma. That is the written Torah, is everything that has it in a condensed, essential form. The, written, the oral Torah expands, and by expansion, it also restricts and limits. It limits and identifies each law exactly what it is and what it is, what is it what it is not. That represents the strength, the severity, and represents the restriction of the Torah, but also represents the, st the strength and power of the Torah. And here, the Alter Rebbe 
is going to elaborate on a verse that we say every Friday night in the song Eish Chayel, what King Solomon wrote. It says, And the strength of that the oral Torah, the oral law, gives the soul of a Jew. King Solomon, peace, peace be upon him, he explains. It says, She girds her loins with strength. Of course, the song Eish Chayel talks about a woman of valor, but and it refers to an analogy, an analogy to the Jewish people. The Jewish people in Hashem are like, like the husband and the wife. And the Jewish people are the woman of Allah. And, they, and she, the Jewish people, girds her loins with strength. What is the loins? The part that supports the upper body? Nosnaim. The loins are the underframe that supports the whole body, including the head that is positioned over them. So if this is in, in the analogy, in the body, there is a similar concept in the spiritual sense, in the soul. It is they that they lead and bring the body to its desire, desired destination. And just as it is with a corporality of the body, so it is with the spirituality of the divine soul. So just as the loins supports the corporal body and head, so do the soul's loins support and lead the body and the head of the soul to its desired spiritual destination. And that's what Alter Rebbe is going to explain. What are we talking about? So the loins. The loins that supports the head, which is the intellect, and the body, which is the emotions. What is the support? What is the basis that supports everything? Is the faith in the true God, the true faith in the one God. We explained about the one God in the previous parts. Faith in the one God is the, the, the true faith that a Jew has in Hashem. The soul's loins are the true belief in the one God, the blessed Ein Soif, the Yomem Malak Olalmin, the Soif of Kalalmin, who permeates all worlds with a vitality which is indwelling, penimi, meaning a vitality which, which is contracted and tailored to the capacity of each individual creature. This is the level of godliness, the way he condensed and filtered his light to, to be able to invest itself in each creature according to its needs. And this the part of godliness which is intense and powerful. It's called the Soiviv Kalalmin, who encompasses all worlds with a vitality that transcends it's makif, and which cannot therefore clothe itself within created beings in an indwelling manner. This is the belief, the true belief in the one God, that everything is one. And there, is being, and there being no place or level of existence void of him. Above to no end. So there is no end to the degree of his exalted transcendence beyond all worlds. And below to no limit, for there is no limit to his ability to descend to the very lowest levels of creation and clothe himself within the world. Even to the point that the world conceals the godliness that is within it. The fact that we can have wickedness, 
evil in this world. That is the ability, God's ability to place himself into the lowest places. And likewise in all four directions, east, west, north, and, four, and, and south, truly in a state of infinity. So all the above refers to the dimensions of space. Now the godliness is the existence not only of space, but is also the dimension of time and dimension of soul. The same applies to the dimensions of year and soul as, as is known. So this faith, believing that Hashem is the one God that permeates everything from the top to the bottom in every dimension. Oh, it's all Hashem, it's all God. Now this faith, this belief in God, as outlined above, is referred to as the loins which uphold and sustain the head. What is the head? The head is the intellect that, com that comprehends and thinks about the godliness. Meaning the intellect that contemplates and concentrates on the greatness of the blessed in the dimensions of world, year, and soul. Thus, this faith sustains the head or the fountain for the foundation of one's comprehension of God's greatness is one's belief in his unity. Our understanding is very, very limited. We need to have this foundation of the faith to be able to reach with our understanding a greater understanding something above and thereby also create the, our feelings towards Hashem. Continues, the Alter Rebbe says, And that meditates on the, on the magnitude of his loving kindness and his wonder and his wonders with, her, with us, making us a people near unto him who can truly cleave unto him. What does it mean to cleave unto him? Says the Alter Rebbe, the way that God gives us the opportunity to cleave to him is way beyond any type of connection that we have in the higher spiritual worlds, the world to come in heaven. As our sages said, tell us that one hour of tshuva, repentance and good deeds in this world is better than the entire world to come. Thus it is known from the teachings. One hour of repentance and good deeds in this world surpasses all the life of the world to come. And why is that? Because what is the world to come? The world to come is enjoying godliness, enjoying God's ray, the light of godliness appreciating godliness. That is something that is very, very limited. The Neshama has a very limited amount of godliness that you can appreciate and enjoy. Here in this world, Hashem, we do Hashem's will, which is the connecting to the very essence of God himself. It explains for the world to come is a mere gleam and reflection of the level of divinity called Shekhinah, a Shekhin Chulu, which is so called because it is Shek the Shekhinah who dwells within created beings and so on. So since the Shekhinah bears a certain relationship to created beings, it is therefore this level of divinity that there is revealed to Ganeiden, the world to come, which is but a pale reflection of the Shekhinah. And as our sages tell us, 
that the world to come was created with one letter Yud of God's name. The world to come was created by the single letter Yud of God's blessed name and so on. But repentance and good deeds, however, they truly bring Israel near to the Father in heaven. And we're not talking to a reflection of Hashem. It's talking about bringing us to the very essence of God himself. And to, as it were, the very being and essence of he who is absolute infinite. As it says in the Tehillim, we say, as it is written, his radiance is upon earth and heaven, meaning that heaven and earth derive their life force from a mere glimmer or gleam of God's essence. But not so the Jewish people, of whom the following verse continues, and it says, Vayorem keren la'amai. He raises glory upon his nation. What is glory? The word keren means glory. The word keren also means the principle, the essence. Like in the Torah, there is talk talks about keren v'chaimesh. You have to pay the principle and a fifth on top of it. Keren represents the principle, represents the essence. So when the when the Tehillim says Vayorem Keren Ami raises the glory upon his nation, he's talking about the principle, the connecting with Hashem Himself. And this is why, as we learned yesterday, when we say the blessing before we do a mitzvah, we thank Hashem that He has sanctified us with it, with His commandments. Similarly, before fulfilling many of the mitzvahs, we say who has sanctified us unto himself through his commandments and commanded us to perform the mitzvah at hand. By granting us the ability to perform his commandments, God elevates us to his level, to the encompassing level of holiness that utterly transcends the degree of holiness that permeates the world. This is what we think. This is what we have to meditate upon. The loving kindness that Hashem has to us to connect us to Him so, so strong. And reflecting upon God's infinite kindness to us in that He chose us to be His nation, the people close to Him, with uh, that will result in a reaction of waters reflecting the face. Just like when you look into the water, you smile to the water, the water smiles back to you. There's a reflection of your face back. The same thing as when you reflect upon God's love to us, it brings up within us the love to Hashem. From this contemplation are born the intellectually generated of, or the natural awe and love. When you think about something, it brings out the feelings. If somebody did something to you, you get upset. But if you, if you start thinking about it, the feeling amplifies. It becomes much stronger. The more you think about it, the more you amplify the feelings. The more we think about the greatness and the love that Hashem has to us, that will ampl amplify the feelings that we have to Hashem. And the feelings can be expressed in many different ways. <speaking in Hebrew> giving rise either to a the mode of love, which their heart cried out unto God in its yearning to cleave to Him. <speaking in Hebrew> or to a different a mode of love characterized by flashes of fire, a mighty flame, is the latter mode of love is the first stage of a dual dynamic called the Rotsay and Shuv, meaning Rotsay is the loving God 
so fiercely and rapturously that the soul almost flees the body. That's called the Rotsi. He's so excited, he so wants to be connected to God that the soul almost departs from the body. And this longing, this longing to expire, to lose one's independent identity in God's all-encompassing unity must be followed by the second stage, which is shove a retreat, a sober and self-effacing return to the div divinely ordained reality of living as a soul and clothed in a body. That's what Hashem wants us right here to do, fulfill His mission. So that there be the fear of God in one's heart, whereby the individuals, the individual is abashed by his greatness. This level of awe, fear, and shame results from the left hand that parries. So the divine left hand represents Givura, the supernal attribute of severity. It holds the worshiper at arm's length, so to speak, curbing the intense love that would result from his sensation of God's nearness, as represented in the phrase, his right hand embraces me. And that's what happened in the, by the giving of the Torah. As it is written concerning the giving of the Torah, the people saw and they trembled and they stood from afar. So the divine revelation at the giving of the Torah produces a feeling of awe and self-nullification, which found expression in the Jews standing from afar, fearing, as they did, to draw close to God. And these faculties, love and fear, are the arms of the body of the soul, the love and kindness are the right arm. Fear and severity are the left arm. So this, al Rebbe will continue in tomorrow's lesson to explain how this needs the strength. To strengthen this amuna is the foundation that keeps our intellect and our feelings in place. But this foundation, this amuna, needs support to gird the loins with strength. And that will be in tomorrow's Shir, God willing. Have a good Shabbos, a wonderful Shabbos. There should be a Shabbos Chazoin that we shall see. As the Rebbe says, we shall see the Beis HaMikdash Ashlishi. All the best.